thank the Manor Park Community Association for kindly uh, allowing us to be here tonight. My name is Martin Monroe. Um, this started out as uh, inviting Eric and Jen to my living room to, uh, with a few friends to describe things, but it quickly became clear that there was a, a much greater interest in that, and so we've migrated to something a little bigger. Um, so, welcome, and uh, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Eric and Jen. Movement, more or less, 
And um, that was very handy because we were backpacking with our kids. So we had to carry everything, and sometimes the kids. And um, so uh, that's, it, we're already sort of feeling along those lines, and then, and then bike packing came along. Um, so we bike, obviously. Um, you know, road bike, uh, cyclocross racing, um, and we had tandems with trailers, and we used to go off with the kids and um, camp for, you know, three days over the May long weekend. May long weekend is a big uh, sort of tradition with us. We always go for a long ride, like 450, 500K, uh, just to get ready for the, uh, the Rideau Lakes. We figured, okay, we did that, and we could do the Rideau Lakes a few weeks later. And um, so then we got out with the kids, and then we were really exploring. We, with the kids, we, would, we started going down dirt roads because we didn't want to go down the paved roads. And, and that's sort of a lot of the impetus for this whole route was, the stuff that we did when we were avoiding the roads, and um, so, and in um, in 2019, we were it was like June, and we we're gonna go for a uh, we we're gonna go for a canoe trip. It was a really buggy year, and so we planned that we we're gonna go do something, but then we don't plan it until the last minute. And we didn't actually, we knew we were going to go on a canoe trip and then we didn't actually know where we were going to go and then it was buggy and we didn't have our food dried and we went, no, we're not going to go on a canoe trip. What can we do? So we decided to go on a bike trip and I had seen somewhere about the, the BT-700 which is uh, down in uh, um, Bruce Peninsula and, um, and then Jen looked it up and then we decided we'll go do that. So that was our first bike packing trip and when I say bike packing, we stayed in B&Bs and motels, so we just carried clothes. It was really nice. It was fun, you know, and there was breweries all over the place and, and that sort of thing. It was also really tough. Um, we were underbiked. We had 35 seat tires, and we should have had like much bigger tires. We were beat up by the time we got to the end of it. Um, but it was really fun, and we went. I think we got to do more of this. Bike packing is bike touring. Uh, but what sets it apart for me is that you need to strap your bike, you strap your bags tightly to your bike because the focus of bike packing is adventure on primarily dirt roads and uh, and trails with the the uh, minimal amount of of pavement to connect nice sections of, of really nice roads. Um, so what we did um, with, the, with the Butter Tart 700 in the Bruce Peninsula, um, really that was our first, our, our first bike packing adventure in terms of following someone's curated route where we borrowed a GPS uh, unit from a friend and uh, Bill loaded the Butter Tart 700 route on this device for us, and, uh, and we, we, we got ourselves to the, the route, and Eric did circles around St. Jacob's, and uh, the, the, the device beeped, and we were on the route, and we followed this route uh, for a week's holiday on, on a bike, and it was uh, a, a great experience for us. Um, so. Um, bike packing is self-supporting. You carry what you need, and that can be just credit card camping, um, bike packing from B and B, or, or some kind of accommodation to another accommodation, or a full full kit to camp and be self-sufficient on, on the on the route. What do the butter tarts have to do with this event? I like the sound of it. Oh, there are lots of butter tarts, and they're famous for butter tarts in the Bruce Peninsula. That's pretty good. Yeah, so, so one of the things, too, is that uh, you, you, you use a lot of energy doing this. Like, um, uh, often the days can be quite long. It depends how you're approaching it. But, um, yeah, so, you know, six butter tarts is not a big deal. <laughs> And, and, and actually, there are really good butter tarts there. Um, uh, you know, we've had some terrible butter tarts as well. Um, but
But I think we got just around. I wasn't going to talk about this one, but um, um, the the thing is that uh, we were we were coming home in, in the car, and um, Jen said, "I think you know, like we just did this really fantastic route in in, in Bruce Peninsula, but like we live in like the best place in the world. <laughs> Let's make a route here." And <laughs> excuse me. Um, so, um, so we decided that that's what we would do, and um, that was, I guess, in uh, maybe August of 2019, and we probably put it out in uh, June of 2020. There's a lot of work in between, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But the reason we decided to do it here is while we know it, um, we're also not, uh, you know, we're not in favor of people driving a long way to go on a holiday necessarily, so like if you live here, why not explore here? There's so much really good stuff right around here. Jen's got family in Renfrew and in the Pontiac, so it just sort of, like, we knew the area. Um, it's also challenging riding. It's very challenging riding. Um, in fact, uh, the person that was fastest in the, uh, in the uh, last year's uh, um, Grand Depart had won a race out in BC. He said, like, this talking about what bike pack like how hard it can be. Um, so it's away from traffic, so that's why we wanted to do it again. And sort of in the back of my mind, for many years, I've been this thing called the Tour Divide. I have no idea what the Tour Divide was, but it, it, I'd heard about it. And I thought maybe I could do that. So, so the Lodge Rivers World is a curated route. It's, it's kind of like a guidebook, a, a rich guidebook to give people uh, the best experience of bikepacking in this area um, where we have put our heart and soul into uh, giving people context to where they're riding, giving them the detailed information to, to ride through the best areas. And, um, uh, it, it's, it has become um, from it, it has become a, a, a route around the map, but very much a, a social kind of social project. Social, it's a passion project to um, get that information out to inspire riders and, and empower riders to get out there and uh, adventure. And explore this this uh, this valley through uh, uh, stor storytelling, uh, uh, through social media engaging and building community, uh, getting getting our our information out and uh, inviting people to come and, and uh, learn about it in, in, in various uh, um, media. And, and, and if, um, Jen just alluded to the, the talking about this idea of community. I mean, for us, uh, it's not about like going out and uh, uh, burying yourself, um, you know, riding around the clock. That's not why we decided to make the route. That's what some people do on the route, but that's not why we made the route, um, just to be clear. Um, so we knew the area. We know the area better now. Um, um, we thought we knew the area, um, so what we did is we mapped out, uh, um, initially it was about 600k, and we just started adding stuff, and we thought, oh, that looks cool. Um, I brought it, but anyway, this, uh, this, uh, that resource, I don't know if anybody's got the uh, Backroads map book, but if you are ever looking for stuff, you can get stuff out of there that you cannot get off of Google, I can guarantee you. Um, Part of the problem is that it may be through somebody's like farmyard, so you've got to be a little bit careful about um, like just saying I'm going to go there because um, it. But super a lot of information. Uh, we use maps. So up until as Jen alluded to it, we had never never used a GPS machine, like car or whatever, before we went to do the butter tart. And if that thing had shut off, we would have been done. Like there was nothing we could have done. We'd have to turn around and go home. Um, I had actually mapped out what the butter tart. <laughs> I am a geographer, and so is Eric. Uh, 
uh, and, and I love paper maps, and I took the butter tart uh, route and I sketched it out on, on a, a road map. So we did have yeah. a, uh, a backup hard copy that, that was very useful for, for planning purposes. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm known for my privilege. Okay, so, um, but, the, but the other thing is, so we, we had a lot of map, uh, history with maps, and we got them, our maps out, and that's what we use for our basic stuff. And then we started using uh, uh, Ride with GPS, which is, uh, uh, it's a program that many of you might be familiar with. Uh, people use it for tracking their rides, they use it for planning their rides. Um, it's amazing how much that application has changed in the last three years. Uh, when, uh, when we started in 2019, there was no Google Map layer. You know, so I had Google Maps open, satellite, some other like map somewhere else. And Strava heat map. And Strava heat map. Well, they didn't, nobody had seen heat maps even at that point, hardly. You know, so it was like a very different. Now you can just go into Ride with GPS and go like that, and it'll make you a nice group. But, um, it was, uh, it was, anyway, so, so we made a, we made a, we made the route, um, and, uh, and so that's part of it, but of course, we'd written a lot of it, we'd probably written 85, 90% of it, but, you know, that 10% is pretty important, right, like if you can't go down there, so. so. In, in the spring of 2019, 2020, 2020 we were out uh, every weekend, uh, and without uh, exception, we were riding some new roads, some new paths, and there were these little connectors that we needed to ensure were suitable for our route. And so riders are not going to be riding along and, and then uh, encountering a private property sign. Uh, even in the time, like we, like Calabogie, we've ridden around there and ridden along the Madawaska River many, many times. There was never a sign for private property. We came along um, on, on one of our weekends exploring and the big that's signs, right. 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 <laughs> big signs, uh, private property. We, so there was like, we, we reached out to landowners to ask permission. And um, in this case, it was it was not possible. And in the end, we don't have any private property um, on, on our route. But uh, it was super fun uh, seeing something new uh, every weekend. And I think people riding our route uh, who are very familiar with these rides end up riding this route, and they say. This place is totally new to me, and I live right in Ottawa. This is not very far away. This is new to me, and um, uh, it, it's a it's a real pleasure of ours to send people into uh, really nice places in, in our in our surroundings. We had good informants, you know. We a few people knew what we were up to. We were sort of keeping it quiet, though. Uh, but our friend <laughs> Dave, right? Uh, his mother-in-law lives near, really near this tunnel, right? And, and, and almost everybody that rides down here, even if they've got a GPS on, rides by it the first time. It's just like underneath the uh, underneath the for uh, underneath the Highway 17, um, and, and and so it's just little things like that. Like this is the whole idea of a route like this: is it's trying to get like turns every gives the local local knowledge to every person that comes along, right? So it's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, we, we had uh, good informants, or we call them our brain trust. We had a, a, a group of uh, um, co-adventurers that uh, w would endorse or, or, or critique some of our, uh, our suggestions of... Then we just ignore them. Right? <laughs> <laughs>
like the recreational pathway through the farm or something. It just might not be so good on a, on a Saturday morning um, to have, you know, we didn't know how many people would come. But, um, so that's why it's there. But I mean, really, anybody can start anywhere. If you, you just get on there and you start riding and, and it'll pick it up and away you go. Um, <laughs> Uh, it goes down as far south as uh, Charbon Lake. It goes through Mississippi. Well, uh, you know, it does a bit of uh, uh, jiggling around um, um, from uh, from Almont. We had some really wicked stuff in there that we took out um, because it was like up to here um, <laughs> at some times of year. But uh, then goes up past into Ren Calabogie and to Renfrew and stuff. So we basically, um, you know, we used rail trail to connect things. We used uh, we use um, uh, paved roads to connect things. But basically, we try to stay on pretty um, nice gravel as opposed to. Um, but there are shortcuts, um, and so all the way up to Gracefield and then down and. Um, the part that some of you might figure out is there's 80 kilometers of, of it are in the Gatineau Park. So you're basically mountain biking with all your stuff. And if you've started in Elmont, you're sort of on your last day. So it's like it's a day. It's like it's a good day. Um, so, um, that, but that's fun. Like people either really love it or they really hate it. This depends who they are. Um, <laughs> What? Oh, the, the, pro, the profile. What? The profile. Yeah, the profile. Profile is important. I mean, um, elevation is, is as much as the as the linear distance, right? It's uh, and it's more than a thousand meters per hundred k, which is pretty helpful. Um, and also, uh, if you have ridden out in Lanark Highlands and in the uh, Gatineau Valley, you'll know that they're pretty punchy hills. I mean, they're, they're, you, you need to have fairly little gear, especially if you've got a bit of weight. And um, uh, yeah, so that, that, that's just a, you know, a heads up. We've got the ratios on the website telling you what you might want to use in terms of gear. When we were riding the log road today, when we were riding the Butter Tart 700, we were riding along and riding this very nice dirt road and suddenly um, we would turn and go into the bush. <laughs> and uh, as we rode the butter tart, we understood what Matthew was doing. And his route is not an A to B. It's not, uh, and, and it's not just a simple circle. Um, you'll notice on the log driver's walls, there's, there, there are not very many straight, straight stretches, and um, they're there for a reason. <laughs> uh, it is an 800-kilometer loop around the, the, the uh, uh, nation's capital, and it's it's circuitous in order to get the the best uh, experience of our landscape. Um, in, in that, uh, in, in, with with a, a flow and, uh, around around the nation's capital. So, in addition to the route itself, we have hundreds of points of interest that are. We think it's a thousand, but we didn't <laughs> want to. I didn't want to exaggerate. <laughs> uh, in, <laughs> Um, there, there are two versions of the ride with GPS route, and the points of interest route uh, is actually very uh, memory heavy <laughs> because it has so much information it, it can overload your, your device. But it's full of information for planning in advance and on the fly while you're riding it. Information about uh, where where uh, services, food, water, uh, uh, accommodation are available uh, along the route, where there are busy sections of uh, highway, the little little bits of, of the Highway 105 that we can't avoid, um, for example, or uh, shortcuts that people could 
uh, opt to take if they are, they're looking to shorten their route um, for any, uh, one reason or another. Uh, we suggest like that you, that you could uh, take a, take a, a turn at uh, at certain places along along the route. I mean, there's places where, like, seriously, if you went like a kilometer straight, you would like cut off 50k. You know? <laughs> we, well, maybe that, maybe that's a slight exaggeration. We tried not to do it like that because then it's way too tempting. But you know. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the other thing is, if you've ever followed a GPS track, it, you, you're not aware that you're doing this you're at, in the same way. You, you know, you think it's a straight line. It feels like it's going ahead because it's always going to the top of you. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. So, one of the things that um, that uh, uh, we suggest, anyway, is that you uh, you download the, um, the, the the route on your phone as backup, um, even if you're using uh, Garmin. So, I don't know. Oh, actually, I, I brought them, but um, but this thing up here is a uh, Garmin. Um, uh, head unit, it's and it... This is a Wahoo. Uh, yeah. Old. Yeah. So, 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 so those are primary, primarily for, uh, um, uh, for navigating, but as Jen says, you can download the, uh, the, the points of interest onto your phone, so you can, you can look at it offline, which means that you have it the whole time. Um, Give a little plug for downloading your route off of our account. We have a special account called a tourism account, and it means that anybody with even just an ordinary account can navigate offline off their phone, which is like a premium thing. It's actually designed for like a tourism associations, but um, they let us use one, and, and um, so it's pretty cool. Um, so putting it on your phone, uh, as backup. Uh, second time we did the log driver's waltz, we got as far as Sharper Lake, and the $100 Garmin that I bought broke. And so um, the whole rest of the way, it was like I had this thing in the, in the, in the, here. I had it on as loud as possible with the zip open, and I would ride along and say, in 200 meters. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we knew the route. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. You can't can't do the route without a, a GPS. Yeah, I think now we can. Anyway, and then there's, there's so on the Bancroft map there. That's the back road atlas, but just in the map. Like so, it's um, it's we do like to take paper backup. Um, it, it it it's just one of those things. Um, even when we did the tour divide, we didn't take paper. We took pictures of all the paper and had it on our phone. And you do use it because like. If you're of a certain age, you actually like to have some context of where you are, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, there's, there, there's, I taught geography, and like there were kids that did not know like where Toronto was in relation to Ottawa. Well, yeah, you get on the four one. You know. Anyway, um, what am I supposed to say about this? Is that well, I, yeah. I would just add that uh, um, I, I'm very keen on creating and sharing the paper map. Uh, for users of the, the Law Driver's Walls, so that we can share our, our adventures with others that are not necessarily cyclists. I like to talk to my parents about what we're doing, and, and folding out a map uh, would be a really cool thing. It's in the works, but uh, um, it's part, part of our project. <laughs> So as I mentioned before, it, it, it's an 800 kilometer loop around the nation's capital. We're never further than uh, 125 kilometers, pretty much, from, from Parliament Hill. And it goes into some very remote areas uh, in terms of uh, services and, and, and cell phone uh, service. There are sections uh, in uh, in both sides of the Ottawa River where you can't get cell phone access and uh, for, for that reason we do encourage people to use uh, a, 
a, a spot tracker or a, a, a garment in reach, some kind of satellite.